Hello and welcome to The Village Voice. I am your host, Kathy Smith. How are y'all doing tonight? I hope that uh, this pandemic hasn't caused you to grab these things, which I'm giving my uh, guest tonight a heart attack with the thought of doing this to my hair. But so many people right now during this pandemic are absolutely losing their minds over getting a haircut or getting their hair dyed. So I thought I would bring in the expert when it comes to hair care, Miss Lauren Rory of Salon 42. And uh, welcome to the show, Lauren. So Hi. good to see you, my friend. Yes. Your hair looks good. <laughs> Your hair looks great. You did good. <laughs> well, I happen to have a really good stylist that does a fabulous job. So, you know, that's what happened. <laughs> I try. Well, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm sporting my, uh, let's see if I turn my head the right way, the pandemic purple that you cut for me, especially. Yeah. So, so we're, we're having a little bit, bit of fun with the, with the pandemic mess. Yeah. But uh, Lauren, introduce yourself to the viewers there. I mean, I know I, it's so good to see your smiling face. I, it's I know. Know, I, 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 <laughs> like my people, so, so, they're my people. <laughs> that's right. You want these. I know you want to touch these. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so Lauren, tell, tell everybody about, uh, about yourself and uh, your fabulous salon that you work for. So I'm Lauren. I'm an elite designer with uh, Salon 42. We have three locations in Charlotte, the Char well, two locations in the Charlotte area, one down in Indian land, South Carolina, and then one up in Lake Norman, which is the location that I am at. Um, I've been with them for, gosh, 10 years at least. So, yeah. Um, I think. I think I've I've been with you about six of those, I think. Six probably. or seven. I think. Yeah, probably so. Yeah. 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 Yep. But uh yeah. So it, it's it's wonderful to see you and, and people really truly are losing their minds over this whole pandemic stuff. Um I just heard on the news today that people were crossing state lines into Pennsylvania that apparently they've lifted their um shelter in place ordinances to allow for people to get haircuts and everything. And so people crossed over the state lines into to, uh, Pennsylvania to yeah. get their haircut. Yeah. Um, there's a salon over salon owner, owner in uh, Dallas, Texas, um, oh, that she spent <laughs> yeah, seven days in jail yeah. for this. Yeah. Um, Which shows the and I heard of getting your hair done. <laughs> You know, it's so many different things were going to happen during this pandemic. And yeah. I didn't know what it was going to take to break us. But apparently it's our hair. It's the hair. I mean, yeah. I mean, so many people have been coming at me saying, like clients have been texting me saying, how are you not essential? I don't understand. And I'm like, yeah. oh. I mean, but we have that, that close contact. So it's just, it's, we've, the service industry and like the nail salons, the hair salons have taken a huge hit with it because I mean, we are, there's no way we can do our job six feet away from someone. So it's, it's tough. No, no. Yeah. And, that, and that's, you know, it's one of these things that, you know, even though I'm, you know, I'm in that same mindset where, I mean, I'd love, cause literally last Thursday, my phone popped up and said, I had an appointment with you. And oh. it was that moment of, I looked at the phone, it was like, Oh, tears. That means I've got tears. Yeah. It was like tears. I'm like, I know exactly what's going to happen in the next two weeks if I don't see you. So yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah. I've had a few of my clients, and, you know, and it, their reminder, like they screenshot their reminder and sent it to me. And they were like, I'm supposed to see you right now. And I'm like, oh, I wish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do, too. You have no idea yeah. <laughs> how much I wish this to you. But, you know, and, and the, the thing is, so so where I'm I'm at with all this is like, OK, number one, I mean, we, we would all love to have our hair done and and nails and, you know, everything. I mean, I am dying for a pedicure in the worst way. Yeah. yeah. Um, But. But the thing is, though, it's at the same time, you guys are, you know, kind of an extension of our family. I mean, you know more about us than like our husbands and boyfriends know. Yeah. You know, you've got all the secrets. You've got all the dish. Yeah. And, you know, it's like I don't Vegas. have that confidence. I always say that the hair salons like Vegas. What happens in the hair salon stays in the hair salon. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I, I know. Yeah. I know it goes well beyond like the bang trims and the bobs for sure. No doubt. It totally is. It totally is. And, you know, and, and I've also seen some stuff coming out where they're trying to figure out ways to deal with mental health mm -hmm. and, you know, part of the pandemic that it's becoming an increasing problem. Yeah. And, you know, you guys, in a way, you're kind of like bartenders and, and psychiatrists and, you know, sure, you name sure. it because we come to you with all of our issues. It's not just, you know, with our follicles. It's, no. yeah. <laughs> That's like the little you know, 
get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. By the way, you leave with good hair. So it's, you're going to feel great. When yeah, you, leave, yeah. you know, you know the, the thing is though, it, it's such an integral part of our lives that, you know, for, for women and men both, I think guys have the same thing too. Mm -hmm. um, it's just not as, they're not as high maintenance as we are. Let's just put it that way. No, no. But I mean, I've, I've had a lot of my male clients reach out and say like, like, dude, like they call me, you know, cause I'm like, they're, I'm their person. We talk football. We talk, yeah. you know, it's just, they have their mm -hmm. own thing too, even though I may not know about all the, the dish, so to speak with the guys. Cause they're just right. Like, right. The same way. They're like, I need my, I need my time with you. You're my person, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. So, you know, and, and this is kind of one of these things that I'm looking at from the perspective of, yes, I miss you terribly. And yes, my hairs miss you really badly. But in the same regard, though, thinking of you as an extension of family, I don't want anything to happen to you. Right. And and so our orders, you know, we're in the state of North Carolina and phase one is about to begin on the 9th of May. And that still keeps salons and things of that sort sort still closed. Yes. And. And even though I still, like I said, I, I would love to have a haircut and a petty, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I don't want you guys getting sick because you're right. so close to us. Right. And, and, and they're so asymptomatic carriers that you could, you could pick it up. Absolutely. So yeah. it's just, it's that, I don't know how to feel. I know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's difficult right. because as much as, you know, I, I want to get back to work from a social aspect plus a financial aspect, obviously, um, that's really hard because, as, you know, maybe I see you, we're both healthy, but then you go to home to your mom and we, we, we carry yeah. something, you know? So, and like mm -hmm. I said, it, it's impossible for us to do our job, not in close quarters like that. So it's, yeah. it, it's tough. It's a tricky, tricky thing. You got like the, the, the moral thing going on. Like, I feel, I feel like, you know, I'm responsible. I mean, you are, you're responsible for someone, someone's life, someone's health. And, but at the same time you're like, but, but they need, they need me. They need to look good. They need to feel yeah. good. You know, we have, that's that. right. So it's, it is a tricky thing for sure. Yeah, it, it totally is. Now, now, you know, let's talk, let's kind of, cause I think I was probably one of the last people in the salon before you guys closed yeah. Yeah. when I got my pandemic purple cut. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love this. I, it, it's, it's made a lot. It's had a lot of mileage lately. So yeah, it's fun. It's, it's so fun. And it's, and it's so hidden that it's like, what, what's that? Someone really have purple in her? Yeah. <laughs> but, but Lauren, let's talk a little bit about, you know, as far as, you know, with the salons have closed and everything, like, you know, let's talk about the impact, you know, that, that you personally have felt and, and, and what's happened in the industry as a result of this whole pandemic and closing the salons. Yeah. I mean, I'm super fortunate enough to have a company that I work for that I mean, I was able to file for unemployment because I'm considered an employee, even though I'm a commission based employee. Um, I did have that option, which is I'm so thankful, so grateful for that. But I have tons of friends in the industry that they they're self-employed. So, I mean, they still have not gotten into the DES, you know, in contact with them to get any type of uh, unemployment relief or anything like that. So. Um, I'm very fortunate and grateful in that regard that I've been able to have that because without it, I, I do not know. And even honestly, even if it was just the, the unemployment, the regular unemployment that you get, like obviously they tacked in that extra $600, you know, right. because of this, right. um, prior to that, I mean, I, I, I can't even fathom it because I don't know. I mean, that is such a, I've never in my life been on unemployment. Like, I mean, I was literally sitting here like, Oh my gosh, what? I don't know what to do. I don't know what I can do. And like I said, I have friends that are, they are self-employed and they, mm -hmm. they're still, they're doing that. They're like, I, I can't, I mean, I, I don't have an income. Nothing is coming in. I mean, that's huge. Yeah. There's salons that won't recover from this. I mean, we've had, I've, I've known a few that they will close hundred percent. They can't stay open. Mm. We, I mean, and it's one of those things like, we need to be safe. I mean, we closed earlier than what was like mandated. So we closed, I think maybe a week earlier. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's just something that we were like, we've, we've got to do it. That's just like our, our moral obligation. Like we've got to do it. But um, I mean, now it's kind of one of those things like, what, when are we going to be able to get back? And then when we are able to get back, it's going to be a totally different, totally different 
I don't want to say a new norm, but I mean, it's going to be different for a, 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 who knows how long, you know? Oh, I think, I think it totally is. I think a lot of things are going to change as a result of this. I mean, my industry is going to change. Um, you know, I think every industry is going oh, yeah. to change to, to some degree, to right. some degree. Um, but, you know, thinking about what you do, you know, how, I guess other than taking temperatures, I mean, what else can you do to, to be different here in the future? I mean, I know that we, um, I was listening to a interview with a guy that owns a salon in Georgia and, you know, they were one of the first ones to kind of come back around, um, and open and some actually this guy in particular, he still chose to close. I mean, he had, I can't remember. He has, it's a huge salon, but he still close to, cho uh, chose to close because he was like, I just, I mean, it was like a hospital visit, all the things that you had to do and then allow it so much time in between each client to get ready for the next one and properly sanitize and just, you know, all this stuff. So he just chose to continue to stay closed because it just wasn't worth that risk for him. But then there's other, you know, people in a smaller setting that or they're the self-employed ones that they have to get back. So it's just one of those things, you know, they're talking about, I'm going to have to charge more because the extra time it's taking me and to even get the, the mask, the gloves, the um, extra capes to wash in between these clients. I mean, I mean, some of these people are going to have to like raise their prices just to cover, not that they're making more money. It's just to cover right. what they have to do. So, I mean, that's a, it's a huge new norm. <laughs> well, and I, I think, and I think that's a good perspective too, because you guys do a lot anyway, when it comes to, you know, like public health, Mm -hmm. um, you know, going back to that salon owner in Dallas that spent some time in, in jail. Yeah. Um, she, you know, if you look at what she did, that was a public health violation. Mm -hmm. And, and so, you know, she's, and I also heard she had to pay $500 a day that she stayed open as a fine. And yeah. someone speculated that she's probably lost her liability insurance because she created a public health violation as a result of her actions. Right. Um, but you guys already do so much when it comes to protecting public health. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that, the, and I don't think people really think about that, you yeah. know, as far as, you know, that you guys control a lot of things by the ways that you keep things sanitary. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that, like kind of the typical things that you did pre COVID-19. Yeah. I mean, state board, uh, I mean, they come in and inspect us randomly. Like we never know when they're coming in. We kind of have to be, on it, you know, we're always like, mm -hmm. <laughs> stay board lady, she's coming in. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You know, even, uh -oh. Uh -oh. Like, yeah. Yeah. even something like if I just finished with a guest and I have a, a brush on my tray that has like two of your red hairs in it from, cause I just hadn't, I didn't grab it. You know, they can yeah. mark it off for that. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've technically sanitized that brush and it's in the barber side and all that stuff. It could still have that hair. They can mark us off for that. And that does happen. I mean, even just like hair shards from a uh, you know haircut that I did before. If they're on my shears, if they open up my shears and see that, I could be marked out for that. So I mean, wow. we have those things all the time that obviously people don't don't think. And there's several salons that don't you know keep up with that kind of stuff, but we we definitely do. And I mean, it's sanitation is something when we when you go take our your state boards, that is the biggest thing. They kind of. I don't want to say they don't care how even your haircut is. They do, but their <laughs> biggest thing is sanitation. Like the haircuts, you get better as the, as you get experience, and the color formulations, you get better with experience. But when it comes to sanitation, they are on our sanitation, hundred percent. Us mm -hmm. tattoo shops, which is obviously in our same category, they can't open just like we can't. I mean, I don't. I heard an article of this girl kind of comparing. She was a hairdresser, and she was kind of comparing herself to like a doctor or nurse. I don't agree with that. I don't, you can't say that we're as sanitary as a hospital. You can't say that, but there's huge things on sanitation that a lot of people probably don't think that we do, but we're on it. So we've got to even step up that game that much more. You're talking extra gloves, extra masks, all that stuff. So, I mean, yeah, yeah we're on it and we, we, we take care of our stuff and we obviously sanitize between each guest and, and, and all that stuff. But you're talking tenfold now, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, like the, the case in point, you know, the gloves alone, you know, when you're touching anything, you you're now those gloves have no longer sanitary. 
Yep. And it could be as simple as, you know, I'm going to wipe, touch my nose. Oh, great. Now those things are worthless. Right. So it, it, there's a lot of little steps in there that you don't even think about that. Oh, yeah. I mean, you we know, have, thank goodness you guys think guys, you, I've definitely used gloves in between like colors. Like I'll rinse off that color and then I'll, I might use them again prior to this. I may use that again because it was just maybe color that was on them. We, we will not be doing that now. You can't do that now. Nothing can transfer to another guest, period. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, there's, there's just so much the scope of this. I don't think we've even thought about it. Yeah. And we were talking about the scheduling of time in between each client, because like a lot of times I'm double booked, I might start your color and go cut it or, you know, do a haircut in between one. I can't, they're going to have to be over here. They got to be six feet apart. And yeah. they, I mean, so that already limits. I mean, they're talking that we have to limit, there can't be any more than 10 people in the salon at any given time that counts the stylist. So your front desk, your guest. Yep. So my business won't be able to run. I won't be allowed to be as busy as I yeah. was before. That's just how it is, which is obviously going to be a financial Ooh. hit. So it's like working around. Yeah. We come in at 7 a.m. and work until 12. And then we, we rotate a shift out for the other stylists that are working, you know, because it's, you know, our hours may be different. We might early come in early. Yeah stay late just to be able to fit all the guests in and us still be able to make the income that we're used to making. So it's, it's a lot. Yeah. And then, like I said, allowing the time frame because you're going to need an extra 15 minute gap on your schedule to completely sanitize and get ready for the next guest. Right. So right. It's a yeah. Lot. Yeah. And I, I'm thinking about the thinking about the salon myself right now and that, you know, it is to me, it's cozy. I like it because, yeah. you know, it's a smaller, I, mean, I, I say it's like kind of a smaller salon. What we have like six chairs in there, I think it yep. is. Yep. And, and, and I, it, to me, it's so much fun, you know, when you're working on my hair, whether it's, you know, whatever we're doing to it, highlights, whatever's going on. And somebody next to me that, that something's going on with them. And so yeah. we all start having this cross conversation, you know, yeah, and it, it could be three chairs like, in a row. Yeah. And it's so homey. Like everybody just chit chatting yeah. together. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that interaction is just, it's one of those things that, you know, if you're a gal, you can totally get it. You understand. Yeah. And, and I'm kind of sad that if that has to disappear for a while or for good, which I hope is not the case, right. um, that that's, we've really lost some of the essence of what makes, you know, being at the salon so awesome. Yeah. I mean, wow. we were talking about, you know, what if we have to, you know, what if somebody, and they were saying this in other States, probably it was Georgia, but like clients going out and processing in the car. So that they can allow someone another guest in, and I'm like, holy moly! Like that, means, it seems so like a uh, like back alley, like bringing in somebody from the front door, <laughs> walking out the back. And like, it was yeah. But I mean, it's yeah. just things that we might have to do, and we're like we'll get through it. But it's going to be different, and it's going to be it's going to be crazy at first. It's going to be a different but business than I've used. We, we might doing. Yeah. We might have some chairs outside. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Just sit, exactly. sit there in jeton and watch the cars go by with yeah. the oils in our hair. <laughs> yep, for sure. That would be awesome. Yeah. Yep. And I wouldn't care. I'd probably, I'd probably parade up and down the street anyway. Oh, I think we'd have a decent yeah. amount of clients that are like, I don't care how I have to do it. Just you tell me where to go. Just yeah. do it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But, but you guys have been doing some stuff in between that, you know, some, so this is, I mean, you guys have done some triage care for people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like you've had a situation with some of your clients. Maybe you can tell what, 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 you know, some of the salons have done there. So we had obviously our salons, we, we stopped working on a Tuesday, I think it was. So, I mean, we obviously have color stocked in the salons and are able to do some things for our clients. Um, so we had, if you had like a root touch up, say you're just your standard, we had tons of highlight people come in and say, I need my roots done. Well, that's a little difficult. That's the, that's a tricky thing too, because a lot of people that wanted their roots touched up were blondes or like one of their highlights touched up. That's a little more involved, but we're talking just your single process, touch up the roots, cover the grays out the door kind of thing. Just basically like you would do your at home color, but with good salon grade products that we would use on your hair. So we put out a thing to our social media following and just said first hundred guests, you know, send us a current picture of your hair. Um, we'll contact your stylist. We'll get your color formulation. 
You can pick it up between this time and this time at our locations. Cause obviously that the stuff is once we mix it up, it's time sensitive. So you need to get it on your hair and all this stuff. And we gave them a brush, um, a bowl, everything that they needed and printed out directions for them, how to apply it, um, how long to leave it on. And that way they could touch up their grays and, you know, kind of <laughs> get by. And then all of the proceeds that we got, I want to say that we did maybe a $10 minimum or maybe it was 20, but anyway, all of the money that came in from that, we donated to loaves and fishes. So um, we didn't take anything from that. Um, that's actually something if we were to, charge for that service that's kind of out of our realm of our licenses actually because let's just wow. say somebody left that on um their hair a little too long right. even though that we yeah. gave them the the instructions and they're supposed to abide by it we could kind of be at fault for that so we didn't yeah. take the money from it it's just this is what this is what we can do for you and please donate to this charity so it really worked out great it helped the community and it helped Obviously, a lot of people feel much better about how they looked. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I, I actually blonde out there though. They were like, eh, I'm mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, somebody in my you you do two Berkshire Hathaway affiliated people's hair that I'm aware of. Uh -huh. Um, and that Angela Anderson that she had an issue uh -huh. that she was supposed to see you. I think the the week after. Yeah, you know, all this stuff got shut down, and I think she was in a world of hurt too. But yeah, yeah so my, my highlight, um, I just like struggling the most right now, honestly. Let's yeah, send up prayers yeah. for them because they're the ones really <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yes, yeah, so I've, I've some friends of mine suddenly have turned gray. It's like, wow, check that out. I had no yeah. idea. I saw this meme right? something about uh, in a couple weeks there will be no more, you know, blondes. You know, they'll be extinct or whatever kind of thing. So. Yeah. And they were worried about us redheads. Come on now. Yeah. We can outdo it. We can outlast this. Yeah. We got this. <laughs> you know, the one that the one that I seem surprised with that his hair is is so light now and kind of grayish is Ryan Reynolds. Oh. I've seen him recently. Yeah, he was on Jimmy Fallon last night. Oh, and okay. um no, he was I was his little beard was all, you know, salt and peppered and his hair is kind of a gray tint to it. I was like, what? Oh hello. Yeah, I know. I've been like kind of like secretly like eyeballing like newscasters and people. Like I'm like, is that a fresh haircut? Did they get who's who's cutting their hair? You know, I'm kind of like doing one of those. <laughs> if, like somebody on me on the radar. Yeah. What state do you live in? Are you open? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Was like that. yeah. Who's who's doing your hair right now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now let's talk about let's talk about some of these people that are at home right now, and they are literally looking at because I, I have Indies the dog. His little grooming kit right here, which has, I mean, seriously, I've got the thinning shears. I've got these <laughs> scissors. This is to cut around toes because yeah. it's bent for that and a little comb. So, you know, there are people that are eyeballing their dog stuff and saying, OK, I can't take this anymore. I got to do something. So let's talk about some of these things that maybe they could do. I mean, short of grabbing a scrunchie, because I know yeah. that's your favorite thing in the whole wide oh, world. <laughs> love those. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, honestly, <laughs> those shears that you have are actually an upgrade from what a lot of my clients have. A lot of my clients grab the the manicure oh, yeah. scissors in a manicure kit. They're like teeny yeah. tiny. They trim their bangs. Um, yeah. I mean, our biggest thing in the beginning was, you know, wait for us. We're gonna need you as much as you need us. Like, wait for your stylist. Wait for your stylist. That was our biggest thing. But I mean, some of my clients are essential. Like I've got several nurses and uh, I mean, I've got one that's, she's a, a security officer at a hospital and she's like, girl, what can I do with this wow. hair? You know, she's not, mm -hmm. and my first reaction was, why does everybody care? If we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, you should be at home, not, not caring about that kind of stuff. But the reality right. is several people that are still essential and they're like, I I'm being seen and I don't like this and you know, all that stuff. So, um, I mean, I've just suggested to people that if they're going to do something, I mean, obviously they have their free will. I don't own their hair. I'm just, you know, responsible for how good it looks most of the time. But, you know, don't do anything permanent. Don't do anything crazy. And then ask your stylist, like, send them a picture of what you've got in your hand at the drugstore. Like, can I use this? Is this going to mess up what I do? You know, what you do when I come back to the salon? Like, that's a big one because anything that I've suggested, I'm like, it's a temporary thing. It will get you by. It's basically like a band aid. 
So band-aid your hair, get it by, nurse it along until you're back to see us. If it's permanent, the sad thing is about that, that could cost you way more money once you get back in the salon. So if you're used to sitting in my chair and getting a certain result, I might not be able to deliver that depending on what you've done to your hair in this time frame. So there's tons of options that a lot of product lines have that are like, you know, color sticks to cover up your grays, um, you know, color like glosses that can maybe turn a brassy blonde haired person to that pretty white blonde that they like. So there's lots of options like that. Some salons are even, you know, delivering product to their homes. Um, lots of things like that. But I would just, my suggestion to everybody has been like, don't cut your hair because that's a lot worse. That has to grow out. <laughs> if it's bad or something, I get it. Like people do that anyway. People do that whether we're in a pandemic or not. Um, right. But right. just don't do anything too permanent. So like, don't go chopping your hair. I mean, I've, I've had so many people, even stylists that are like, I'm getting ready to chop my hair. And I'm like, okay, but you can't see the back. Like we're stylists, we're licensed. We know what to do, but you oh can't see the back. So that's going to be, that's a bad thing, you know, but that, that's chopping, scary. Like don't do anything permanent because that's got permanent, uh, like consequences for it. So that, that, that service can be a lot more expensive when you go back into the salon. And that's something I don't well, think people, most clients don't think about because there's like, ah, color's color. Nah, it's not. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. No, and the thing, you know, there's a, you know, my, my, one of my favorite people in the whole wide world, Brad Mondo. <laughs> and he just watches people do things that are terrible, all these fails. Yep. And like, like he, like one of them that I just watch is like bad bleach jobs. The so bleach. this is not I, the time to bleach your hair. Yeah. And that's the thing. That's why I said my blondes have it the worst. Like if you're, if you're a level two, which would mean you have black hair, like, and you have grays coming in and you go to touch up and you can't take it. That doesn't make a hairdresser cr cringe as much as someone that gets out the bleach. Someone that goes and tries to do their own highlights. Color. That's so scary. a quick rundown. Color can only process for so long. It won't get any darker if it sits on your hair longer. It won't, you know, unless it's, I mean, if it's professional color, it will not get any darker the longer it sits on your hair. You do have a recommended time block that you need to get it off of your head, but it's not really going to make it any darker or any lighter necessarily. Bleach? Bleach. <laughs> so it up to 50 minutes on your hair. It will process. So it'll start to lift. Like if you're dark, it'll start to lift, 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 lift for 50 minutes. And then it basically is not going to lift anymore. You're not going to get any blonder. You're not going to, that's not how it works. After 50 minutes, if it's still left on your hair, it starts to eat away at your hair. So yes. people tend to leave it thinking, well, I need to get lighter than that. I see orange. Like, I mean, I want to get lighter. You're not going to get any lighter. You're going to get a chemical haircut. <laughs> so. Oh yeah. Yeah. The, those, those terrify me. Yes. I, I mean, I, you guys, and for people watching this that you've never seen that before, the yeah. first time I actually saw one of those videos that Brad had done where somebody was like, oh, this is, and it was literally like every single day, like for four days in a row, they bleach their hair yeah. and like over, like sat it on their air hair for like an hour and a half. Yeah. And, and so they'd wash their hair and they'd be like, oh my God, what is this? And they would literally pull out. It was like the, like a hamster sized wad yeah. of white hair. Chunk. And they go, what is this? And they turn around and you see a chunk missing mm -hmm. out of their, out of their hair. Like it's, it, don't do it. Don't, don't, yeah. please put down the bleach. Do not yeah. do this. Ble bleach is the one thing that I'm like, I pray no one touches during this whole thing. Mm. Bleach is where it gets scary. Like I said, you can make enough mistakes with color because, and there is a difference between color and bleach. A lot of people don't understand that, but there is a difference. And color there's damage to be done in the sense you might not be able to get back into the hairdresser and have that beautiful result you're used to getting because of what you've done to it. And we have to like backtrack from that and work through that. Bleach is a different story. Bleach is like, it doesn't, your hair doesn't fall out. People always say that it breaks off. So it can break off at the scalp, which would make you think it's falling out, but it will break off. It literally will just break off. So, I mean, oh God, yeah, there, there isn't indestructible, and people think it is sometimes. It's like, oh, I don't, I don't understand. Like, I colored it yesterday. I don't know why I can't color it again today. Well, because there's only 
so many bonds in the hair that you can break and still have hair on your head and bleach breaks a lot of them. So, <laughs> yeah. 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 That just that thought of just trying to do bleach anyway is just absolutely terrifying. Yeah. It's, um, you know, with all the things that people have done. Yeah. You know, I, yeah, no, no, don't, don't do that. Yeah. You know, uh, there are other things with someone please do not do. Like I, I'll, I won't, <laughs> I won't criticize anyone if they have to touch up their grays with color and stuff like that. Like I get it. I completely understand it. We'll work through it. I got it. <laughs> but bleach. So, I can't. There's no coming back from that. <laughs> I can't. But, so, so you'll forgive somebody if they go back, grab a bottle of like a box dye you know, or grab some thinning shears. Cause it, I'll say that, <laughs> I, you know, the, the thing that I might do, you know, if this thing goes on further and further, I can't see you. I, I mean, th these little thinning shears <laughs> that might find a way right through here. Yeah. You know, just, I think, you know, I think we may see more cutting or people be more tempted to cut than color. Maybe. I don't know. Um, yeah. I mean, like I said, I've known hairdressers that I think it's literally out of boredom that they're like, I'm going to do something. And I'm like, Oh, yeah. So I can only yeah. imagine how some of our clients feel. <laughs> well, you know, when, when, cause I'm, I'm trying to look through it all the time, you know, so I know it's, it's, it's getting to that length, like about a week from now, it's going to be out of control and then it's yeah. just going to go downhill from there. So my I had you always, know that. always start on the longer side. Like if you're going to cut your bangs, yeah. just do a little bit. <laughs> if you think like, Oh, well, it's been a half inch too long. I'll take a half inch off. No. You take like a no. smidge or a quarter and then work your way up. Like don't, don't take and, too much. And is it, and isn't it that you're, you, you should be cutting like this way and not going, I'm just going to go straight across, you know, yeah, like, like you take a little bit out. Some too. Like definitely no blunt lines. Cause then you, if you mm -hmm. cut a blunt line, obviously you're going to see that blunt line and then yeah. trying to, to blend that in, you're just going to get shorter and shorter and shorter. So always oh, yeah. point cut into yeah. it if you must. Yeah. The, if, <laughs> there was a video I saw. I think it was. I think it was another Brad Mondo video. And and somebody had gotten the idea. They take the hair that they're gonna that they're gonna cut for bangs, twist it, and hold it there, and then take the scissors and cut straight across. <laughs> well, she did. It's, it's legit. But there's so much yeah. in how you need to hold them and then twist them and then make them flat again because it's supposed to yeah. allow you to have like longer hair because you're over directing those hair. Yeah. So. The, the concept behind it is actually really good, but the execution is where it goes wrong, <laughs> which is like, well, and, and that's how, and, and that's how it wound up on Brad's video because it yeah. went wrong. And, and so yeah. the gal had twisted her hair and she had grabbed the scissors. And so instead of like trying to cut like down further, like down here, she cut up here. Yes, I saw that one. <laughs> it's like no hair. <laughs> cut above where she was supposed to. Yeah. I remember saying that. Oh. <laughs> And I was like, oh, honey, this is not yeah. going to end well. And the whole time she's cutting, she's got the scissors up here. And you can hear her going, oh, this is not good. This is not good. And then she <laughs> like, lets it go and they're like straight out. They're just like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't, do don't, don't do it. Yeah. No. That's but, why but so, many of my clients just have reached out to me because they're just like, I'm thinking about this. Taught me out of it. And I've always, I've said this for years, but there should always have been a hairdresser hotline. Like we'll talk the scissors yeah. out of your hands. We'll do it. <laughs> do this. Like, and now more than ever, we oh. actually need one. So I think, I think I'm on to something yeah. here. I think you might be. Now, by the way, at the end of this video, there's also going to be your contact information. <laughs> so yeah. once the pandemic lifts, I mean, you can go see Lauren, but you have to be, be aware. I got to get in first. So just, yeah. you know, hold on y'all. Yeah. Um, but in the meantime, I mean, you, you're obviously sitting there at home that, and nothing's going on. So, you know, how can we, you know, the general public, how can we help you during this time? I mean, what, what kind of things could we do to help support you? So um, a lot of a lot of hair salons have, you know, recommended the gift card thing um, to purchase gift cards to use at a different time. Me personally, I've just told my clients, like, wait for us. You know, I. I, I love the idea behind the gift card, but it's either I'm getting paid now or I'm getting paid later kind of thing. So it's a great concept. I'm not, I'm not knocking it at all, but I would say probably most of the hairdressers is kind of like, Hey, wait for me and come see me as soon as we're in. Like that's, that's one of the things. Um, a lot of hair salons, the product lines that they carry are giving them a little extra incentive. So if they, some salons actually have a link to buy those products, um, 
or you can just go straight to the website, which one of ours is Bumble and Bumble. And if you go straight yes, to the let website, me yeah, if you go straight to their <laughs> website, you can at checkout, you can shop like you normally would. And at checkout, they have a uh, an option for you to list the salon and actually your stylist too. So the salon obviously gets credit. How that works is the salons all the time when we sell those products, we are able to collect points and cash those points into education. So I'm a network educator with Bumble and I was able to do that because we accrued points through selling retail, selling product that I was able to go and do that and become more knowledgeable on the product and thus be able to help my clients more with the needs of their hair. So I can say like, oh, your, your problem is dry hair. Well, this product does this and this product does that. And because I'm more knowledgeable about, knowledgeable about it, um, mm -hmm. so, and then they also have the option of listing the actual stylist and they've upped their commission from, I think usually a 30% commission to 40% just to get, you know, a little bit more coming towards this to the stylist because we're all sitting at home. You know, I had a client yeah. text me yeah. about products the other day and she was like, okay, I have this in my basket. What else do I need? And we just literally taught, I mean, I sent her like a novel of a text and I was like, can you tell I miss talking about hair? Oh <laughs> because, man. <laughs> because, I mean, I was like, because she had picked out her shampoo and conditioner and I was like, those are great. That's what you need. And I said, do you have a leave in? And we walked through that and I told her how much to use and, and all this stuff. Like when you go to a drugstore and you buy your products from them, sure. You can read the packaging and be like, Oh, I have dry hair. Or I want lift and I don't want volume. But like a stylist is going to know how your hair is. Some people say, I have fine hair, don't I? And I'm like, actually, no, you don't. You don't have fine hair. Yeah. It's, it's thin, but it's not fine. You know, so mm -hmm. it's, it's those things that maybe, I mean, I'm no fault of anybody's. I mean, you would think you know your hair, right? But as a hairdresser, I can say right. that product that you picked out is actually going to be a little bit heavier for you. You should try this. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important to buy from your hairdresser or buy from a suggestion from your hairdresser because they know your hair. I mean, exactly. You know, so. they, you know, my hair, you know, my hair better than I know my hair. Yeah. You know? And, it, and if you notice, there's not, I don't have any frizzies going on. Did you notice this? That it's very nice and tame, you know, tamed out. It looks well, really and, and it's, well, and it's, I worked extra hard on it too. Cause I thought a little pressure's on. Because um, yeah. you're going to be seeing it. But, yeah. you know, it's the thing again, you know, going back to because I use a lot of and I'll, I'll just throw some product names out here yeah. is Purology is my main brand that I use for shampoos and the hairspray. By the way, I love that that hairspray. I didn't have to shellac it. It can actually move. Yeah, that um, was, I love that new one. It's so nice. And I, in the latest stuff that you got me for Purology for the conditioner, I think it was that it's got kind of like a I don't say a menthol, but it's like it's, it's, it's just like everything's like, well, yeah, my whole scalp's going. Hello, I'm awake now. Yep, it's um, yeah, it's but, awesome. but it's amazing that it's giving the nutrition to the hair that it needs. Yep. And then on top of it, I'm using the Bumble products to go ahead and you know, like the styling cream and then the hairdresser's oil. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I'm also still using their um the texturizer as yep. well. Yep. So it gives it a little bit of lift. So it's like I've got all these things going on in the hair and, you know, that it's it's got the nutrition that it needs. Yeah. And so it's not giving me the flyaways. It's not giving me all the goofy stuff that that happens. Yep. And, you know, it's, I've had friends that have cut, that have gone to stylists and they've said, well, my hair doesn't look like half as good as it does when I, I leave them. And I've asked, well, what product did you take? Did you buy from them? Well, I didn't buy anything. And, and yeah. a lot of the hairstyle is the product. Yeah. I have a lot of my clients that will even say sometimes, you know, oh, I shouldn't say my clients. I've had clients sit in my chair and have said, <laughs> I don't want any product. I don't like how that feels in my hair. Well, especially if they're new to me, I'm like, well, how much did you use? What product did you use? How did you use it in the hair? There's a lot of products that are actually heat activated products. So if you just put it in your mm -hmm. hair and kind of air dry your hair or just blow it real quick and you don't really yeah. round brush it or something, then you're not getting the full benefit out of that product. You won't because it doesn't work that way. Um, you know, right. people saying it, it, I feel it in my hair. Well, okay. How much did you use? You know, yeah. okay, well maybe that isn't the product for you. Maybe we actually need to go to this product because you don't really feel that one. It yeah. doesn't have the, the memory hold that the other products have. So, I mean, there's maybe mm -hmm. that product isn't for you, but I have something else that will definitely still give yeah. you the product or the result that you need without the, all the stuff right. you don't like about the product. So it's 
Yeah, there, there's one that, that you that you gave for me that's, that I spray on my hair right before I style it with the with the brush, and it is heat activated mm -hmm. because it's that's another one that just smooths everything out, and yeah. so it's amazing. So, again, guys, you just you got to you got to call your stylist and say, hey, <laughs> this, I need your help. What do I need to get? Because yeah. you know you know what's better than we do. Yeah, and that's a like, like I said, I've had. There's a lot of um, products now online that you can go and take a hair quiz. And it's like, fill out this questionnaire and we will give you your prescription pad of products. And like I said, it's of no fault of the client by any means, but they may fill out, oh, I have, like, it may look like I have coarse, thick, crazy, curly hair. I actually have really fine hair. It just expands. So, I mean, I don't actually <laughs> have thick hair. So, Mm -hmm. If someone, you know, you may, a, a normal client may say, well, I've got this coarse, you know, coarse, curly, thick hair, but you really don't. It's actually when I always say I'm like one of those dogs that like is really big and fluffy. But then when you go to pick them up, their body's like right here. That's my hair. <laughs> like I don't have. You're like a Samoyed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like when yeah. my ponytail is actually kind of small. So, I mean, that means I have yeah. hair, but somebody might not know that. So they fill out the questionnaire and they actually don't get the right products that they need for their hair. So it is really important. I mean, you would trust your dentist to recommend the proper toothpaste, right? Yeah. I mean, this is, this is right. This is right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Lauren, let me I'll go ahead and wrap up to, tonight. I just can't thank you enough for being on here and so give us some really great tips. And plus it's helped you to talk about hair for a bit too. I know. I'm like, what else you got? I want to talk about hair. I'm so excited. <laughs> I said, you know what? I feel like I feel so refreshed. And so like, like my life is normal again by seeing your happy face. Cause I, you know, every six or eight weeks I see your happy face yeah. and now I feel like, okay, life is good. Things are going like, normal. I've seen you. Okay. It doesn't seem as bad now. <laughs> it's not as crazy now that, right. that I've seen you. Yeah. But, any last minute tips or tidbits that you'd like to leave with everybody and say, Hey, here's some things to think about, you know, whether it's pandemic stuff or if it's just, you know, hair in general that people need to think about. Yeah. Um, I would say in, in, in the hair aspect, definitely just use this time. I mean, I've definitely done it. I'm, I'm a blow dry person. I like to blow out my hair and make it straight and all this stuff, but I've just let it go. I've let it go natural. I've done a lot of hair mask and, rotating between protein hair mask and hydrating hair mask. Cause there is a difference between the two. Um, just giving your hair a break, like give it a break from the heat tools and, you know, give it a break from pulling it up all the time because, you know, people pull it up in those hair ties and they actually are breaking their hair by doing that. So just, just give it a break, like hydrate it, moisturize it, just give it, let it be like, don't mess with it. You know, I mean, we're not doing anything. We're all sitting at home. Just let it be. Um, but that would be my biggest thing from like a hair perspective, but like just a, like a personal thing, honestly, like I would tell clients if they're sitting in my chair, I think a biggest thing for me is just like journaling. Journaling has been a huge wow. thing. Like, where are you at right now? Like, what's your thoughts? Like, you know, maybe, maybe that ties into hair a little bit. Maybe you say, I just feel really gross and I have horrible roots and I just don't feel very pretty, but like, but are you healthy? You know, you see all this stuff, you know, on the news, like these unhealthy people and people are dying from this stuff. Like, but are you healthy? Who cares what your hair looks like right now? Like we'll fix that later, you know? Yep. And like, I think that's mm -hmm. something that I would tell clients if they were sitting in my chair saying, you know, Oh, this world's so crazy. And I'm so, you know, depressed about what's going on. And I'm just, it's, I'm bombarded with all this negativity, but like, if you're able to sit there and talk to me about it, that's a good thing. <laughs> you know? Well, we need to get our butts back in your chair. That's what we yeah. <laughs> going, going like, like that. That will make the world perfect. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, that would make everything right. The world would be right once again. Yep. But Lauren, thank you so, so thank much you. for coming on. So good to see you. And you. that has been some excellent advice. I, you know, I can't wait. I can't wait to get back into to the real, the real world once again. I know. But uh so I will talk to you soon. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for tuning in to the, to the Village Voice. I'm your host, Realtor Kathy Smith. And, you know, honestly, folks, it may seem like a very small thing that you might do, but, you know, one simple good deed really could just change somebody's life. So, you know, reach out, see what you can do. Have a great night. And uh, by the way, tune in on Friday when we're going to be talking about mortgages.
you know, all these things are going on right now about loans of different sorts. They're talking about forbearance and refinances and all kinds of great stuff. But really, what's the wisest move to make your money right now? So uh, tune in. I'm going to have uh, Annika Cole from Movement Mortgage. She is just the greatest loan officer on the planet. That'll be coming along here to uh, talk about mortgages. So until next time, I'm your host, Realtor Kathy Smith with The Village Voice. Good night.